Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, in this episode, I am going to talk about the C++ Box project that I have been working on and it is available here on GitHub. And as you can see, I have a very exciting website at the moment with only a little bit of a readme and currently some failing continuous integration test and code coverage and code factors that could be improved. This is definitely a work in progress. I have done a previous episode on C++ Weekly about this called uh, compile time arm emulator I believe was the title of that episode and I have mentioned this project in my applied best practices talk that I gave at CppCon 2018 so this is an arm v4 emulator that has been written in C++ and it is 100% pure portable C++ although as you can see I do have some failing tests at the moment I need to get that figured out um, but that's you know, something that I can probably get figured out pretty quickly here. As you can see, this is not meant to be a terribly formal episode about this project announcement today, but I wanted to draw some attention to it because I'm going to be using it in some upcoming episodes for just some programming in C++ kind of episodes. So this is what the C++ box actually looks like at the moment. And this is running in Linux, but the project is meant to be 100% portable. It can work with compiler backends and whatever that it exists from the LLVM Clang project on all operating systems. And I'm using a cross-platform GUI toolkit for this and everything. So right now I have this screen that has this one uh, cyan pixel on it right here and you can see I'm currently emulating it something like it says 30 megahertz that's a really rough estimate that's actually meant to represent 30 million instructions per second which in this arm emulator is probably a little bit closer to about 120 megahertz at the moment but I have the emulator paused and I'm going to just walk through a little bit of what the whole goal of this project is first of all there is some possibility for using this as a teaching tool. This is um, still a little bit TBD on this stuff, so I'm going to hide that window away for the moment. But what I have here is an emulated arm, right? So you can pull up the state of the machine. You can see the state of all the current registers. You can see the state of memory and of the uh, current source code that's being executed. I have this current little sample project up that defines an RGBA struct. It defines a display of the ability to write pixels, set resolution. Now let's set the resolution of this tiny little emulated screen. I'll get to that more in a moment. And so I have this, you know, couple of dozen lines or so of helper, helper functions. And then I've got my main. And my main down here says I want to create a display that is 16 by 16. Then I want to write a single pixel in the middle of it that is 100% red, 0% green, 100% blue, and 100% um, opaque. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the run button here. Now with it running, what it's doing is it's basically constantly stepping through the project. So I am going to add something here to this because right now it's going to execute through the project and then it is going to just exit. Basically the emulator is going into a halted state. So I'm going to put in a loop here that keeps it inside the emulator and maybe we can play around a little bit and see what it's doing. So each time you see that fuzziness there you can see it as basically rebooting. So if I were to hit pause, it's in run mode. I am going to reset it. And now with it reset, we can see line 41 is highlighted. I'm going to step in. And it's stepping in here to this set resolution code. And it is setting, uh, actually writing memory locations in the emulated CPU that are controlling the width and height of the screen. So we can see the width was just set. And then we're going to step a couple more lines. 
and the height will come in here and now this is the 16 by 16 that we wanted and then we execute a couple more lines and we see that the cyan here is now being drawn to the screen and as uh, you can see it definitely has some work to do as far as trying to get the exact alignment with the current source line being executed and that kind of thing all working. And I just wanted to uh, share this project that I'm currently working on. So let's see if we can do something maybe a little bit more interesting here. Now, this inspired by Compiler Explorer is constantly executing. So I'm going to put this in run mode. And so the project here has this pixel. And it's basically constantly writing this same pixel over and over again to the screen. So now I should be drawing a line that goes halfway across the screen. And there it goes. The line is halfway across the screen. And we can see this is kind of uh, executing this while true loop over and over and over again here. And we can see which part of the memory is currently being executed and we can see if any registers are changing and right now only the program counter is changing and that makes sense because it's just writing the same thing over and over again here and we could make this slightly more interesting perhaps make it draw across the screen make the current x location come into the color component of this so we're going to get something of a varying color across the screen and right now I have a compile error and I don't have the ability yet to actually show that but that's currently in progress so I have a compile error because this RGBA is expecting uint 8 T's and I just passed it an integer So I can do something like that, and now I should get a color that changes across the screen. But uh, changing just by a value of 8, this is not something we can really see on here. So that is the green component. Let's make that x times, say, 4, and see if we can start to see some color variation. But we can see it reboot, and it execute the new code as we're typing along. And we're still not really seeing anything to speak of. There we go. So with a scale of 16, now this goes from cyan, or excuse me, from magenta to white. I think I said cyan earlier. So there you go. The, the entire point of this is to make a C++ environment that is fun and easy to work with. Obvious things that need to change. We need to get the um, display into some sort of dockable format so that there's not just a bunch of windows to shuffle around. I need to do better disassembly and debug tracking so that the current location being executed is better represented. And I need to display what errors and warnings there are, maybe syntax highlight those things in the editor to let you know where the errors and warnings are. And the learning component of it, these goals up here that are currently hidden away, that needs a lot of work, but it's an idea and a work in progress. So throw this out there. If anyone's interested in a project like this and contributing to it or anything like that, feel free to check it out. It's on GitHub, as I already showed. And I've attempted to make a bunch of issues that are in the user-friendly, uh, first-time programmer kind of um, first-time contributor to this project tagged that way in the issues tracker in GitHub. So uh, check it out. And um, like I said, expect to see this come up more in future episodes.